Grand Rising and good morning. Oh, hi, it's Dania. Um, it's Wednesday, Mercury Day, Great Communication Day, and I know I need to do the new moon reading, and I decided. I think I'm going to go back to doing them on YouTube. So yay, aren't y'all lucky? Um, but I just wanted to chat this morning. Um, just a little quick, hopefully quick, chat about um, when you're called to be a leader, but you don't always feel like one. And also defining for yourself what it means to lead um and some reasons why you know you may have some hesitation or trepidation around um being called to lead there you go um so and the sun is like shining in my window in my face. So if I'm squinting, that's why. Um, so um, just to give you some like quickie highlights. So I am an Aries moon in the 10th house um, for my astrology folks. So for those who are not Aries, God of war, um, passion, drive, he was a leader. Um, moon is about your emotions and, um, what fills you up emotionally. Um, and the 10th house is your area of public recognition, perception, how other people in the world, you know, and I don't mean that in the literal planetary sense, though for some people it could be, um, yeah, where that is. Um, I have some critical degrees for some of my planets and things like that, but I'm also a life path 11. Um, so then there's that spiritual teacher, you know, and that's, a, you know, one vibration and a two vibration. So again, that call to lead. Um, I'm born on the first of the month. Again, call to lead. Um, but I did not, I think I kind of ran away from even thinking that off and on throughout my life. And one of the things that I remember being reminded of during my um, initiation recently was that you don't have to be the loudest, meanest, even visually strongest person in the room to be the leader and to be strong and to be powerful um in my youth i think i muted it you know being a nerd being a geek being the smartest one in class that just that didn't make you popular it just was not one of those things that made you popular and so there were moments i just wanted to hide it like i remember telling my advanced chem my advanced chemistry teacher would grade on a curve. That's what she did. But I asked her once because she pulled me out of it because in order to grade on the curve, essentially it has to be one, you know, a lot of times it's used to help bolster grades because everyone didn't do really well on the test. She just did it in general. But it was like you take the person who was closest to an A add the points to get them to an A, and then that's how many points everybody else gets added to their grade. I averaged over 100 in advanced chemistry. And it's not just saying that, like I literally, my average was over 100. Um, and she would like, well, we're gonna grade on the curve, but no, 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 no. Like I had to pull her to the side and ask her like, don't, don't, don't do that. Um, my parents were really big on education. 
Um, and in elementary school, a lot of times we'd end up being ahead because my mom and dad would have sat with our textbooks, gave us work to do. So I, I just remember like in fifth grade being pulled out to class to go help someplace else biology class my biology teacher would help have me go through organizing I had a few teachers like that like I spent a lot of time with my teachers organizing their classrooms doing their grade books that was the kid that I was that's who I was and in the moments in school where I wanted to step out in front where I thought maybe I can be in student council or maybe I can do this thing or maybe I can do that thing never picked and so and it's funny because it even happened recently in my adult life and it was so funny um but I just wasn't chosen it just like you know that's not what you do you're a smart kid that's not that's you don't lead you know and when I got older and just working like being a manager things like that were not in my view because I didn't see myself as a leader. I have saw myself the way other people had pigeonholed me. Um, and that's what I saw. So, and even not even th realizing every time you do a school project, you're the one that keeps it organized. Every time this thing comes up and no one wants to do it, you step up. Not realizing those things are leader. That That's you being a leader. So, I, um, Getting in my working life and I'm working as an adult and Pizza Hut was the place. And my manager, you know, after about six months, I was like, I want to make you a shift manager. I'm sorry, what? You want me to tell people what to do? Like a job? And, you know, she's like, you know, they're going to try you because you're so nice, blah, blah, blah. But I think you can do, I think you can do the job. But there's going to be one person and we knew which one it was going to be. He's going to try you. What are you going to do? And lo and behold, he did. I took the promotion and I messed with her. I said, you know, you gave me this promotion because you didn't want to keep giving me employee of the month. Um, so I took the promotion, did the job. And Beats Up really was the place that said, leader, wake up. Pizza Hut really was the place, leader, wake up and getting out of my own way and shutting down what other people say. I'm just shuffling cards to see what pops up as I'm talking. Five of swords, not listening to everybody else. Like, I don't care what everybody else says. They're all talking this noise, but I'm going to shut those out. That shut down that noise. So, um, ooh, freeing myself. <laughs> That's awesome. Definitely reverse on the back. <laughs> and... It was one of those moments where I had to make a decision one night and he was like, the, at what he did, he was the best. And I was really, really not sure um, of that was what I needed to do. I was really, 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 really unsure, but I did it anyway. I did it anyway. And the store did not burn down. The store did not burn down. We were able to close. We got everything done. And he understood, I will send you home, period. I can do bad by myself. I will send you home, period. Um, so as years went on, because I was there for a while, and one day she pulled me to the side and told me, she's like, you know, my, um, well, I think she was my ex at the time, but said that she we work together and she said, you know, she leads in this way. This is her style. This is her way. And you don't have to lead that way. You, you don't, you don't have to reshape yourself to be her. Just lead because they'll follow you. They don't, they don't have to be scared of you. They don't have to, um, feel like you're going to, you know, fuss at them or anything like that. Um, do it your way and really own that, like own your style. So I was like, okay. And, you know, I went from shift manager to assistant manager. She had offered the assistant manager role to me once and I turned it down. And I know that probably sounds crazy, but I didn't think I was ready. Like I still was really unsure of myself. Um, but eventually I took the role. 
Um, and I did that up until I left. And I, I, I absolutely give, <laughs> I give Pizza Hut that credit like that. If I had not, um, <laughs> if I had not, um, gone through <laughs> the keys right there at the bottom, that was, that they were the key to finding that. Um, in me. So, you know, fast forward a few more years and it's like, okay, you know what? I want to leave. I think I can do that. I think that's something I'm good at. But then it's not that I haven't led in my current job. I haven't had the, uh, uh, but one official, like, I just haven't been promoted to manager. That's probably just the, the short way to put that. And so again, there's this, mm, mm, mm. but it's kind of mixed because it's like, I know, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I look at, you know, the track record and I look at, you know, almost, I can pick out almost anyone that I've either mentored or coached or something to that effect. And they all leveled up in some way. Even if they left, they they le le left and leveled. They left and leveled. Or they leveled there. And it was just like, you know. You know, there was even one time like we're interviewing for a new promotion and it's me and my mentee. It's like, so, but then, you know, you have your spiritual awakening. And then your spiritual awakening comes and says, you are being called to lead. And let me qualify this because you know where it's not calling me to lead? Corporate America. I need to lead in some place I'm going to be passionate about it. And something that's going to fuel my fire. Something that's going to make me just like... And it's not that I haven't been glowing. It's just that I glow differently doing what I love. I glow differently. And it's not that I'm like, I don't have, you know, a church or anything like that. That's not the case at all. Um, and even when it's been divine that, you know, you're going to be a whole priest at some point. Okay. And I mean, I am going to be ordained as soon as I finish my exam, like I'll, I'll be ordained, but, and I have done at least one initiation thus far, but there's even other ways. There's something like this where it's not, it's not what I do daily. And contrary to what people at work think about me presenting, it's not my favorite. It's not, it's not my favorite. Because public speaking still makes me nervous. Public speaking still <laughs> still makes me nervous. <laughs> Temperance. Honestly, I think it's the angel. And I do it. I record whether it's a podcast or a video or something. I do it to find my genius. I know on the other side of my fear and my hesitation and my trepidation, there is my genius. And that's why I do it. Um, being myself, just being true and authentic to who I am and who I want to be, you know? I was looking for a witch hat. You know why? Because every good witch needs a witch's hat. And I wanted my witch hat. I'm going to um, get my little crown and, you know, one of the little uh, crowns with the spikes on it. That's on the list, too. I'm going to get one of those. Um, but doing things like making it known like I read cards and making it known I enjoy it like that thing that 
I, the video I was watching is like, how do you know when you found your passion, when you lose time doing it? Writing, um, even sometimes cooking, but writing, doing divination, like, I don't know what time is. Time does not exist because I lose it. It's gone. Um, even coaching and mentoring, it's the same way. And for me, divination allows me to merge spiritual and practical together in a really great way for other people. Like I may be doing divination, but I'm also mentoring and coaching all at the same time. And I have so much fun doing that. That's why I just went ahead and opened up my um, coaching on my website is because I truly enjoy helping people. I truly enjoy helping people. And what I love even more is watching them do the thing that I ask them to do. Just trust in the feedback that's provided and come back to me and say, I did that thing and this is the beautiful thing that happened afterwards. And what I'm doing is leading people to themselves. I'm leading them to their true north. And whatever way that ends up working but that's that's my mission leading them to your true north is where you are divine and whether that is reminding you to not play it small and to be big and to be loud whether it's reminding you who cares what you're wearing we didn't come in this world with clothes on anyway so wear what you want to wear whether it is um Reminding you that if it's your path to be whatever, if you're meant to be a Muslim, be a Muslim. If you're meant to be Jewish, be Jewish. If you're meant to break away from organized religion, break away. Be who you're meant to be. And even if the only thing you're doing is walking towards your true north. You don't know anything else. You don't know your birth chart, your life path number, anything else. The only thing that I help you do is move in a way that makes your heart feel full. You're always on the right path. And I think that's important to remember. So if you find that, you know, you're getting coached and you're being advised, because everybody's not meant to be a leader. And I think that's the thing that used to throw me off is because I'm aware everyone is not meant to lead. Not others. You may be meant to lead yourself, but not everybody is meant to lead others. And... Not everyone is meant to um, teach others. And everyone, my elder, my godmother came to me. She didn't hit me up in my inbox or anything like that. It was divinely orchestrated where a reading was blessed to me. And I had been listening to her on her radio show for a minute. And then to be able to get a reading from her and feel all of her ashe in the most beautiful, like, I know you kind of way. There wasn't anyone else other than the other mentor that I have. Because there have been others that have crossed my path. But there's, you know, I could have easily went to the Botanica close to me. There wasn't, everyone is, you, all leaders are not meant to lead everyone. All teachers are not meant to teach everyone. Just like all students are not meant to go to every teacher. And all followers are not meant to follow every leader. There has to be a resonance and a balance. And it's not that people who lead are better. They're just, that's what they're called to do. And that just is. There is no better. There is no best. There only is what is. That's the only truth. And being able to um, see the truth in that is what helps because then it's like, okay, show me where to go. Oh, my battery's getting low. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, because I can't even see at this point. So if you're being called to lead, start off with leading yourself, leading yourself to your true north, and then see whether it's you're leading other people, if you're leading an organization, if you're leading, you know, a Girl Scout troop, whatever that path is, 
but you'll only find it when you're moving in your heart space with your passion. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Drop something in the comments to let me know if you've been called to lead, how you feel, how do you feel like you're leading. And if you just need some advice because you feel that call, but you don't know what to do with it, you know, you can book a consultation on my website. I'd be more than honored to help you on your journey. Take care.